All right, so in my opinion, which isn't necessarily that good, but it's at least my opinion, um, I think that, that many of the things that I've been setting forth in relationship to kind <clears throat> will help us to more fully comprehend reconciliation from God's side instead of just us getting saved and getting stuff because we got saved. To, um, <clears throat> to from now on maybe think of these truths not just as salvation, but as um, bringing about or having been brought about the things that were in God's heart from the very beginning, even before the fall. And, uh, and maybe we can read into some of the things, you know, that I'm yet to share. Uh, we can read into those things. Um, this heart that you can't explain with every sharing, you know what I mean? You have to, you have to explain the mechanics sometimes of the situation. It's on. And so, um, um, so just, you know, that concept that we have, okay, to be reconciled, there have to be two parties that were not going together. And they weren't uh, uh, compatible. They weren't what? Jiving. Yeah. Well, somebody in that, the two was a jive turkey, so it was. <laughs> it takes two to tango, but it only takes one to not tango. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> um, so to not be of God's kind results in us being his enemy. Do you see that? I mean, that's, that's the fall. To not be of his kind ends up that you're his enemy. And uh, especially not, not, not like, um, well, I don't like you now. Not that kind of enemy. Not like, well, I don't like you now. You know, I, I get an attitude or something, or you fail, so I just this or that. But the very nature of the two natures trying to um, jive together is, is not, it doesn't work, and, it, and it's an enmity between the two. So, um, so when we realize that, then we have to realize that reconciliation is not just forgiveness. Because you, you know, there's no saying that we've sat around here for years, and that is you can't forgive Adam. You know, he can only be put to death, you know what I mean? Because you can forgive him, but Adam's going to be Adam's going to be Adam's going to be Adam unless there's a change of kind. <clears throat> and so, um, let's see. Uh, in, in reconciliation, Jesus, in his kind, is the literal abolishment of sin nature, of the other kind. He literally is the abolishment of it, and we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. I mean, you could, you could best probably draw it as, um, you know, those, uh, those two trees, and, uh, and you can go ahead and have some branches here, and, and the idea being... Uh, that this is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's a different kind. And then you have the tree of life, which is a totally different, you know, totally different kind of tree um, than this one over here because it's of a different kind and it brings forth different fruit and it... And, and uh, more importantly, uh, it's not one of better or worse in the sense that we usually look at because that would be looking at it through the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It is just not of him. 
you don't you know what I mean? It's just not of him. That's like that's like two completely opposite people that just w would never get along under any circumstances getting married. Well, I'm just I'm not saying anything. I'm just <laughs> not pointing I'm not pointing fingers here. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. Because because it would be a living hell. <laughs> you know, and that's all you can say about that, okay? So, so the, the simple version, we're just doing the simple version here, is that uh, Jesus comes over here, and, and we'll add to this as we go here, but he comes over here and he, and he cuts this branch out of this old kind, and it's grafted over here into him, and from that, it catches. And that's where the word abide comes from, by the way. The word abide in him is based on a grafting thing, where we become grafted into him, okay? And with the result of that is, when you're grafted, his kind, his life flows into us. So, so, you know, we'll, we'll see this over and over, but it's not, him give, it's not him making us after his kind in that sense. That, he tried to do that with Adam and Eve. It is making us one with him. It's a completely different thing. One is he makes you after his kind. The other one is you're joined to him and he's the one. Okay, we'll see that as we go here. All right, so... Um, <clears throat> to be joined to him is like a branch cut out of a rotten tree but grafted into a new one. That grafting process brings about true reconciliation. By being cut out of the old kind, we become dead to it. All right. <clears throat> so there's a, there's a couple of different angles that you can, you can look at this in. <clears throat> By being cut out of it, you become dead to this old kind. Now, it's obvious, and so we're going to give one angle here. It's obvious from the nature of this thing that, uh, at least I'll know where it's at, <clears throat> from the nature of this thing that um, the old nature is still very prevalent in the world, okay? So, in that view, God cut you out of that Adamic nature that is very prevalent in the world, okay? In that view. We're going to have another view. That's not the only one. But in that view, it's like that tree lives and he cuts you out of that tree and he plugs you into him and then his life is the, the, the change of kind that comes into you. All right. Now, there's the other view. And that is... Before he even, you know, and this is contrary to nature, but before he even cuts you out of it, he comes over here and he puts the ax to the root of that old tree. Okay? He took the whole nature of Adam to the cross and put it to death. Now we have scriptures that verify that. That's what it says. That's the literal thing that he did. Okay, but it wouldn't be natural to say that someone cut down a tree and then once it's dead, go over and, and cut a branch out of it and graft it in and it would live. That would be not according to nature. But that also is sort of a picture of what happened because the death to this creation is already done. But it's done in Christ. We see not yet all things under his feet, but nonetheless, doesn't mean they're not. Okay. So, so, there, so not according to nature, there is a death to that tree, and then as we receive the Lord, as we receive the Lord, we are taken out and grafted in, and only then does the life of Christ begin to flow into us. Amen? Because this death happened 2,000 years ago. 
the time. You say, well, how, you know, the Bible says, for you're dead and your life is hid with Christ and God. Well, when did I die? Well, I'm crucified with Christ, da 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 Well, how can I be crucified with Christ? I wasn't even around 2,000 years ago. da 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 Okay. Well, he didn't specifically crucify you. He crucified the old nature or he laid the axe to the root of this kind. Okay. And we reckon on that so that we can have reconciliation. <laughs> I reckon. <laughs> Does it feel like you're in Texas now, Nicola? <laughs> um, so there is that, um, that reality that, you know, some people go, and, and you see this with people, they don't understand the gospel. They just think that all, all that happened was that Jesus sort of walked by here and saw this branch, and this branch said, you know, I'd like to be saved, and it's on the old tree, and he said, okay, you know, you're saved. And they went, oh, yay, you know. And, and therefore, they get down the road and they don't deal with the old nature and things start cropping back up and coming back up and bad fruit starts showing up and pretty soon they say, I'm going back to my old life. But in truth, they never left it. They're, the old life is not what they were doing. The old life is that nature that never got dealt with. And now, this is a little hard but in the truest meaning of reconciliation, they were never reconciled because that person still was of one kind as far as how they acted. Now, we know that if you, if you reckon on the cross, then it's true. If you reckon on these things that, that you're in Christ, you are. But, but he's, he's, never, he's never acknowledged that by faith, you see? And he's never bought into it, if you know what I mean when I say that. He's never made that his realization. Um, maybe it was true in somebody's theology, his pastors or anybody else, but for him, it was what they call simple salvation. I prayed a prayer and I got it and this is what I got. Okay. And then, so then we see people go back and we go, wow, that's so sad. Why do people ever go back? You know what I mean? And we just, and it, it can be hurtful because you don't, you know, you just go, gosh, they, they were doing so good. Were they? Maybe they were doing so good and evil. Remember what tree this is? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And maybe they were squashing down all of the bad fruit and letting the good fruit show up. And everybody thought that was Jesus. And it wasn't Jesus. Maybe, maybe none of it was Jesus. You know. All right. So <clears throat> it is. I'm, I'm thinking about joining the Blue Man Group, but I'm, I've got a way to go here. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So, well, let me just uh, read some of this. However, uh, let's see. By being cut out of the old kind, we become dead to it. Okay. However, that's not the end. Then we must, be, we must become grafted into Christ and his kind fills us. In other words, just being cut out of that old kind does not mean that you're reconciled. You have to be of the same kind. Think about it. Just being cut out of the old is not salvation. That's just, you know, that's another form of death, really. It's of his kind is Christ living in you, is being joined to Christ and being reckoned as Christ and being reckoned on all those things. So um, then we must become grafted into Christ and his kind fills us. It is his life that we are filled with. And, you know, see, theologically, we all know that. Well, I got Jesus and I'm filled with his life. But God is not theological. You know, he's not. To him, it's an issue of kind. And now, based on the cross, it's, it's no longer even an issue of kind in that sense. It's an issue of Christ. Because Christ is the kind that, that 
that secures us as, as that kind, as the kind that God is. And union with him secures that. That means that he is the surety of reconciliation. He's not just the reconciler. He is the surety of reconciliation because he is what's being reckoned to us as the right kind. Well, I'll explain that a little different in a minute. All right, so um, it is his life that we're filled with. If Christ is not our life, but we are simply Christian by means of a prayer, then there's no true reconciliation. Now, <clears throat> let's stop for a moment and deal with people's fears. <clears throat> yeah, yes. Yes, you're saved. No, I'm not um, preaching fear and condemnation or any of that kind of stuff. <clears throat> but because the truth is we are dead with Christ. The truth is we have been joined and placed in Christ. The truth is Christ is our life. That is not a theological truth. That's the truth as it is in Jesus. That's settled with him. He'll never go back on that, and it's settled with the Father. <clears throat> All right. We're talking about trying to find the Lord's heart in these things so that we flow with his heart instead of that we, you know, are just learning doctrines or are ignorant of doctrines, you know. <clears throat> um, you know, a doctrine never saved anybody. Jesus saves, <laughs> you know. And, uh, <clears throat> but what we're calling for by, by sharing the truth of reconciliation is <clears throat> we're calling for trying to please the heart of the Father. We're trying to, the, in other words, we're trying to get ourselves out of the concept of reconciliation from my view so that I can see what I get out of it and start looking at it from his view and I'll tell you what he gets out of it. He gets his kind, and I'll be more specific. He gets Christ in us out of it. All right. So maybe we've been Christian and haven't been letting Christ live through us. The hope of this kind of sharing is to reach our heart for the Lord, for the Father. That's the hope. All right. <clears throat> All right, so if our faith is just blind faith and somehow theologically embraces that we're joined but not in a real way, <clears throat> um, then, then for the Father, there's no reconciliation. See, and, and when I say that, I'm not saying uh, he's looking at this like, okay, then you're not saved. He's looking at this as you're the body of Christ and I put Christ in you and I would really like to get Christ out of you. You know, okay? And he's the father. So we're supposed to be as children, as family, as the body of Christ, as all of those things. We're supposed to say, we want to give you what you want instead of always working this stuff to what we want. All right. Um, <clears throat> All right, so let me give you another, another view of grafting. <clears throat> and I've got a little list here, so I'm not going to put it as a chart. I could, I could but um, when I do, it just makes me blue. <clears throat> That's what you deserve. That's what you deserve. <laughs> All right, another view of grafting. The old kind, which is the old nature, which is, we call it a lot of different things, the flesh, the old man, um, the old nature, all of that. The old is put to death, and that equals the old tree is cut down, which we mentioned, okay? Number one, the old tree is cut down. Number two, a branch is cut out of the dead tree, which we mentioned. This branch is cut out. Again, being cut out and grafted in is two different things. Grafted in is reconciliation. Being cut out is preparatory to, to, to reconciliation. It is what is necessary before it could ever take place, all right? 
So <clears throat> branch is cut out of a dead tree. Number three, <clears throat> the branch is grafted into the new tree, which is Christ, the true vine. Well, you know, tree, tree of life, true vine, however you want to look at it. All right. Then the next phase is the life of the new tree or the kind, the thing that makes it bring forth a certain kind of fruit, makes it bring forth the, the life of the sap that's in that tree that makes it bring forth a certain kind of fruit, a certain kind of flowers, a certain look, a certain shape, everything about it, all of that goes into the branch. And now the branch being grafted in is joined to Christ. All right? <clears throat> um, so the life of the new tree enters the branch. And then number five, the branch becomes of a new kind. All right. All right, so I was thinking about that. <clears throat> and... Um, uh, one second, I want to make sure I try to cover all of this. Uh, so I was thinking about Christ as uh, as a mediator, um, <clears throat> but in a different way, because everything that we look at can either be a theological reality or not reality, but a theological truth that we hold in our heads, or it can be the reality of Christ that is eternally true. All right. So in that sense, Christ is a me mediator because he's the provision for us towards God that reconciles by changing what kind we are. In other words, union with Christ he is the mediator in us that makes us be able to be reconciled to God. God recognizes his kind called Jesus. All right. Uh, he is the means of death to our old. And he is literally the kind we become joined unto that satisfies the Father. All right. So through the cross, and now you got two aspects when you consider this. You've got the cross and you've got Christ. So you could say that basically what we're doing is we're preaching what Paul preached. I'm determined not to know anything among you but Christ and him crucified. All right. What is the place of Christ as life and what is the place of the cross to affect the change from me to him? <clears throat> All right. So the cross is is that death to the whole tree and everything that's on it. <clears throat> that ends our kind. All right, now if you see this from God's point of view, you know what you're going to come away with? As far as God's concerned, everything's already done away. He's only looking in Christ. He's only looking in his son. <laughs> so we see, we see not yet everything under his feet, but the Father does. He goes, I, I, put, I put away, you know. And if that's true, folks, we have to uh, side with God. We have, to, um, we have to say with. The word confess is to say with. It is not just to say, you know, a lot of the old confession thing, you know, the faith confessions and all that. You just say it, you know, name it and claim it, blab it and grab it. <clears throat> Well, this is, this is not that. This is to say with. That means we say what God says, and we say it because we believe it, or we say it because we want to get it in us. <clears throat> okay, so if he says that's, that old creation is dead, there's nothing to go back to. There's nothing to go back to. Uh, it's a little bit like, <clears throat> and it's only a shadow, but it's a little bit like uh, Israel, uh, you know, the lamb being killed in Egypt, and they go to the Red Sea, and the Red Sea opens, <clears throat> and they, you know, they cross over, heading toward a new reality, leaving the old, 
And not only did they cross over and make it through, but the enemy, the Egyptians and Pharaoh and all them, they go into the open sea, and once they get in there, it all closes up, and then it says, and it says this, that they looked and they saw all the Egyptians dead and they're floating up on the banks and stuff like that. <clears throat> all right. But sometime later, they start griping about the wilderness situation because it's not very comfortable. I thought this was going to be fun. I thought our lives were going to be great. I thought God was going to do all this wonderful stuff for us, you know, and we're actually experiencing some hard stuff. So somebody comes up with a great idea. Let's go back to Egypt. Well, there is no Egypt at that point. They all died. All the leaders, all of the armies, the Pharaoh himself, it's done. And trust me, even if there was enough people to accept you back, they're not going to accept you back the way they did before. They're going to hate you. They're going to, it's not going to be, you're, you're living in fantasy land. <clears throat> you can't go home again, not in that sense. And so, um, so, so we got to come, you know, and this was one of the things that I had to wrestle with because, you know, uh, I realized that I was going to have to make a break with my mind and I was going to have to let his mind be in me. And, you know, and that's a, that's a process. It doesn't happen overnight because our carnal mind is, you know, the scripture says in Romans 8 that it's an enemy of God. Our carnal mind is an enemy of God. And so I would think thoughts, you know, that I shouldn't be thinking like, well, it doesn't seem to me like it's so bad or this or that, you know what I mean? You know, and, <clears throat> and then I'd go, you know, oh, I just, I, I just became the enemy of God. You know what I mean? By, by allowing that, you know, the old way I used to say it is you can, you can let a bird fly over your head, but don't let it nest there, you know, you, you know. And then you got you know, you got all these thoughts going on in your head and you give it ground and you know it's going to mess with you after a while you learn to deal with it by the word of god you know and that's what jesus did jesus said and the devil said da 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 and and, and uh, jesus said it is written and when i read that <clears throat> It was at that time in my walk and very early, it was earth shattering because the son of God is there. He's, um, he's got the power to do anything. He can destroy the devil. He can, you know, whatever. He's got all angels and everything at his disposal. And when face to face with the devil, He's, he basically says this, I'm not going to operate as the son of God. I'm going to operate as man, the son of man. I'm, I'm going to operate as man. And he's saying to us, this is how you do it if you're mankind. This is how you do it. <clears throat> okay, let's see it, Lord. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? It is written. <laughs> That's how he dealt with the enemy. It is written. Da, 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 da. I'm going with that. And the devil's going, what? What are you? I mean, what do you do? Yeah, that's it. You know, you give them the word of God. You know, <clears throat> we used to let our kids watch this show called Gospel Bill, and and it was a Western Christian thing for kids. You know, and and that Gospel Bill would walk out in the middle of the you know the road. Everybody's cleared away because the gunfight's going to go on, and the devil comes out, and he's standing down there at the other end. And Gospel Bill's ready to take him on. He goes. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world, you know. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it. Because he's dealing with the enemy the way Jesus dealt with it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he's, he's giving him, he's not only giving him the word, he's giving him Jesus. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And I'm not coming to you on any other basis. <clears throat> anyway, it took me a while to, to get that down, but I eventually did. Or I'm still working on it. Let's put it that way. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's see. Um, the mechanics of this process of reconciliation are different for the father than for the son. Okay. All right, so uh, just picture up here. Um, I'm, I represent the son. And uh, here, Deb, why don't you come up here and I'll just use you. Even though she's a girl, she's going to be the father. All right? 
Father. Oh. Anyway, okay. So, you know, um, there's us out here, and we want to be reconciled to the Father. Jesus as mediator and reconciler doesn't take us by the hand and go introduce us and say, look, I'll vouch for them. <laughs> They're okay. Because the Father doesn't, see, he doesn't see stuff or words and stuff. He just picks up what's kind. He does. He just goes, I don't think so. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right. So, so the reconciliation for the, for the Father is that they become one in Jesus, okay? And they, they're in him, and they're bone of his bone, and they're flesh of his flesh, and they are um, uh, extensions of him. They are his body. They are him. And so as such, then, when he comes to the Father, the Father embraces Jesus because he's embracing that because he's embracing his kind. But we that are in Christ, he's embracing us too because we've been joined and made one. All right, so let's see. Let me see if I can do this. Um, it's a completely different process for the, for the son, for Jesus. It's not as wonderful. The father's just standing there and reconciliation is coming. The father's just going, you know, I received my son, I received my kind, you know. But for the son, it's like, um, uh, okay, I'll, I'll be the, let's see. I'll be the son and then you be the believer. <clears throat> All right, so here, here comes a believer and, and she wants to get to, this, to the father and be reconciled to the father. Well, remember our last class? This process isn't just huggy, huggy, you know, everything's wonderful. In the other one with Christ being reconciled to the Father, they join with Christ and then the Father accepts them. But in this situation, Jesus has to join with sin. It's not so beautiful. It's not so wonderful. Not for him. Not for him. See, and that's the deal. It's a good deal for us because we're, it's always about us and what we get. And we never turn this and look, we just go, well, he's God. He can handle it. You know, I don't, you know. All right. So Jesus, to become one with this, to, to um, uh, affect this uh, reconciliation, to be, you know, the only way this is going to happen is like our last class, he's going to have to join to that. And that, you know, that's going to bring him into, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And he's going to have to take that to the cross, put it to death, raise them up in him as him, bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, as his body, and then go to the Father, and then there's an embrace. All right. So once you see that process, you realize things. Once you see that process, you realize, you know, we just we banter around all these theologies and stuff. You know what I'm saying? We, we talk about all this theologically and, oh, well, you know, we're reconciled to God and, you know, thank God. And we even shout and all this kind of stuff. And we have no clue of what Jesus had to go through to get there. However, he endured the shame because of the joy that was set before him, and that was to bring back to the Father some of his kind and for, for him to receive a bride after his kind, the Father to receive sons in the image of Christ. <clears throat> All right. Um, <clears throat> read this little paragraph Christ is our kind or, or our change the result of reconciliation is not that we are holy but we are joined to him who is most holy all that we were not 
before God, that we stood before God, all that we were not, Christ has become. He in his person is made these things to us. And this is, uh, this, is a, this is just a hard thing. I mean, you can hear it and people can tell you and you can nod. Um, but you'll never be what you're supposed to be without understanding that Jesus did all of this in his person, not just by his person, by the person, you know. He did it. No, no, no. He did it in himself. And, um, and that literally scrapes away every work or goodness about yourself that you would hope to offer God because trust me, for every good thing you'd offer him, you know, you got at least one more bad thing and it's all off the same tree anyway. It's the wrong kind and he knows it and we think that that's what he wants. And, you know, and we're offending him constantly without even knowing it, you know. And you see that in the, the prophets always saying that stuff. <clears throat> um, so what we are not in ourselves we have become in Christ. What we're not in ourselves. However complete and perfect he is, so is it reckoned unto us. And it says there in Romans 6, being alive unto God through Jesus Christ. Alive unto God through Jesus Christ. And see, a lot of Christianity and, you know, I don't know the whole ball of wax, but a lot of it is just I'm saved and therefore I'm reconciled. Therefore, I'm, you know, by the fact, by the fact I got saved, I'm reconciled. No, 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 no. By the fact that you're reconciled, are you saved and vice versa? Because all of this is one thing and I, I don't want to get into all of that, but in truth, there is no reconciliation, salvation, da 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 We break them down so that you can um, have an understanding of the parts. But the problem is, is that um, we have broken all these things down and the parts have become the, the thing. And we don't see them all gathered together in one, in Christ. We don't see him. We see them those things, those subjects, those uh, things that, that we think have saved us. All right, this is the last uh, paragraph. Um, and it's just a little contrast between old covenant reconciliation and new covenant reconciliation. There's a contrast between reconciliation pertaining to the law and that pertaining to Christ. In the Old Covenant, you are reconciled to God by being and doing right. By, you know, always trying to do the right thing. The law. Okay. And, uh, <clears throat> um, nah, I don't want to get off on that. Uh, but in Christ, we are first reconciled and then comes conformity to that which we are already reconciled unto Christ. Okay, I'll read it again. But in Christ we are first reconciled and then we conform to the, to the reality of that. But God accepts it. He accepts it because of his son. His son didn't have to talk him into it. His son laid down his life to put away the old and he rose again to bring the father the new. And he is, the father is absolutely, you know, it, we talk about, well, I need assurance of faith or I need, you know, security or whatever. The father is absolutely secure with the son. Okay. Well, then, again, we see not yet all things under his feet. We look around the world. We see, if we don't look around the world, we look at ourselves. We go, well, everything isn't conformed to the image of Christ but you're joined to him. 
And, you know, it's a little bit like planting a seed, you know, especially, um, you know, my favorite example would be, let's, let's, you know, as a church, let's do a, a little thing, symbolic thing. Let's go plant a seed out in the front lawn over here or in the back, you know. Let's plant that and let's have a little service around it and let's plant this seed and let's water it and let's be mindful of this and this seed is going to represent our growth, you know, in Christ. And we all go, oh, you know, praise the Lord, yeah, let's do it. And so we go out there and, and the, so, uh, so I, I say to Jim, I say, uh, we, we pray and we talk and everything and we've got the hole dug and everything and I say, the seed. You know, like the preacher says, the ring, you know, the, the seed. And Jim hands me a seed, and I look at it and go, praise God. This is, this is going to be so special to us. You know, what kind of seed is this, Jim? And he goes, it's a redwood tree. Well, I know we don't know much about redwoods down here, but they are huge, huge, huge. And they've been around for... Like I said, some of them have been around since David's time. So we put it in the ground, we covered it up, we water it every day, and we all go out every Sunday and stand around and we go, okay, you know, this is a uh, picture of our faith and our growth. And we go out there and so years pass and, you know, seasons and then centuries pass and everything. And, you know, and it's like, okay, and then it's like this that, uh, you know, 40 years into it, we're kind of going, you know, we're not growing real fast here, are we? Well, the, the truth is, compared to the potential of the seed that's in us, we're not growing very fast. Can I get amen on that one? Compared to the potential of Christ in us, there's a lot of conformity that we need to do. We're usually happy with just a little bit, you know what I mean? Over a 10-year period, we go, I'm, I'm growing, you know? But the, again, if we could go out there and, you know, just a little sprig comes up after 40 years of planting and then out there every Sunday, you know, going, please show something, please. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, did I finish this here? <clears throat> I'll read that one sentence and then a, the last two. But in Christ we are first reconciled and then comes conformity to that which we already are and to what we've already been reconciled unto, Christ. These are important distinctions. When outside of God, you're on your own. But inside of him, then you are counted as him by reason of union. Sound good to anybody? Yes. Me too. Father, we just thank you for your son, and we thank you for the spirit of God, who, um, though Jesus has, has uh, bought this plan, and the Father sought it, it takes the Holy Spirit to rot it, to bring it up to pass, to make it real in us. And so, Father, we just ask you to allow the Holy Spirit to continue to conform us to this reality and to and it not just conform us in our actions and ways, but to first renew our mind to it, to conform our mind to not the ways of the world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So, Father, we thank you, and we ask you to just never let these things slip with us. Father, we don't ever want to just get off track. We want to stay with you, not because we have to, not because we fear hell or any of that stuff, but because we love you, Father, and we love you, Jesus, and we love you, Holy Spirit. And so we ask you to, 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 to uh, do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to your spirit that works within us. In Jesus' name. Amen.